So today we're going to talk about uh, moving towards civilization. As you see, this is a PowerPoint we pulled off of uh, one of the book PowerPoints. So, so understanding our past, dawn of history, and the beginnings of civilization. So you do need to know uh, these things like geography. You need to know is the study of people, their environments, and the resources available to them. Put a star by that. And, of course, history uses written evidence to tell us how people lived in the past. History, guys, study of the past. You need to know these five themes of geography. That would be place, region, human environment, interaction, location, and movement. If you look, place describes where something is. Region is an uh, area of land that has common features. Uh, natural, artificial, language, government, landforms, etc. Uh, human environment interaction, basically people affect the environment and the environment affect them. If you don't believe it, uh, this time of year we're either in shorts or we're in long sleeve shirts and pants. It just depends on the time of the year because the environment does affect how we, we dress and uh, how we, you know, how we, how we uh, bundle up or lack of that. Location, where a place is on the face of the earth using latitude and longitude, basically using coordinates. And, of course, movement is people's movement from one place to another, sharing ideas. Movement is when a small group of people do it. Cultural diffusion is when a large group of people do it. A civilization does it, sharing ideas. There you go. Culture, well, you need to know what culture is. It's the sum of people's way of life, like food, religious beliefs, artistic achievement, clothing, uh, economy, technology, physical needs, etc. Uh, cultural diffusion, like I said, spread of ideas from one um, civilization to another. You need to know what these are, guys, and I'm going to tell you. Um, anthropology is the study of culture. I know, I mean, you just take the red anthropology and say it's the study of culture. Archaeologist, this is basically the study of early civilizations used by excavating. You need to know archaeologists are diggers. Excavating is a fancy word for digging, and they study traces of early settlements. So you need to know anthropology studies culture, archaeology, they're going to dig up traces of earlier settlements. And you need to know what an artifact is. It's any human-made object. So, yes, we rely on written evidence to determine how people live in the past. Uh, this right here is the definition for a historian. You need to know this. This is important. Basically, collecting evidence, guys, that is when a research paper, when you have to write a research paper, you get a bunch of different sources that's what that is. Evaluate, that means you read these sources, you're reading, and then your interpretation. Guys, when you write a research paper, at the end of your research paper is this thing called a conclusion. It's what you learn by studying all of this. That's what interpretation is. It's basically your summary. Um, you interpret the evidence. That's what historians do. Recorded history began around 5,000 years ago, so historians can only go back about 5,000 years using written evidence. Um, historians are like detectives, and they sometimes come up to different conclusions. So, I do have pictures, uh, a PowerPoint with pictures on here for you, so you can see these early hominids. Um, but this is how we started, and we actually started with uh, Australopithecines. You'll see that. Um, and that PowerPoint I give you. Um, so Homo habilis is the first. Uh, habilis means man of skill because he created stone tools. Homo erectus, he's the first one to walk upright and he doesn't have a slump to him. Uh, Neanderthals, there's a Neanderthal right there. Uh, mainly found in the northern hemisphere of the world. Homo sapiens, that's us, and we appear, as you see, about 150,000 years ago. There's some pictures for you, it's archaeological digs. So what do you think? 
you guys read over them. That would be the those two right there. So, what advances did people make during the old Stone Age? And well, back. how can we learn about the religious beliefs of early people? And why was the Neolithic agricultural revolution a turning point in history? So, um, the time before, wait a minute, back. So, with this right here, what advances did people make during the old Stone Age? They work with stone tools. Uh, the Paleolithic period, stone tools. What what can we learn about the uh, religious beliefs of early people? Um, we can learn uh, that they actually practiced them, and um, you know, very spiritual. Uh, what can we learn about the Neolithic Revolution? Why is it a turning point in history? The Neolithic Revolution, guys, basically is the new stone age paleo meaning old neo meaning new and the big invention there would be agriculture farming so i think that's what this stuff's going to talk about here uh do, 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 do. history time okay history is the time before prehistory is uh before there was writing History is the time after writing was invented. Prehistory is also known as the Stone Age. There are three parts to the Stone Age. There's the Old Stone Age, Paleolithic, known for stone tools. The Middle Stone Age, or Mesolithic, known for domesticating animals like, you know, dog, man's best friend, uh, pig, all of those things, um, cows. They start to domesticate the animals during the Middle Stone Age. Not many history teachers talk about that in high school. And... Um, New Stone Age, Neolithic, basically is uh, the big invention would be uh, agriculture, farming. So here you go. We're gonna, I'm gonna leave that up for you real quick. We've already talked about the Paleolithic era. You need to know nomads. These people travel from place to place, gathering food. There you go. You do need to know what animism is. Uh, it's uh, basically a, a belief. It's a spiritual belief. It's a you know basically different religions throughout the world practice animism, but it's a belief that uh, is full of spirits. Uh, the world's full of spirits and forces that might uh, reside in animals, objects, or dreams. You'll see a lot of uh, ancient cultures believe in this stuff. Which I mean, you know, you think about Native Americans over here, dream catchers, things like that. So. And as you see, early people began burying their dead, which suggests there's a life after death. Um, people before this, they don't bury their dead. They just leave them out to, to be eaten and stuff. So, so here you go. Okay, so there. I think I've already talked to you about this stuff, but basically um, the Neolithic Revolution is a change from a nomadic uh, style lifestyle to a farming life. And you can see what people do here. Not to mention, if you look at this, when people are able to settle down, people are able to farm, and they're able to uh, domesticate animals, all of a sudden they start teaching a little bit more and learning. Education starts coming along. So here you go, Neolithic era, Stone Age. Um, why would people build uh, civilizations near rivers? You need to ask why, what would the advantages be, and what would the disadvantages be? Okay, uh, that one's kind of messed up, but yes. Uh, which of the following suggests that early people held religious beliefs? It would be the first one there to scribble in. Scribbled in. There you go. So here's some more questions for you.
So farmers began cultivating lands along the river valleys, producing surpluses of food or extra food. These surpluses would help populations expand. As populations grew, some villages swelled into cities. You do need to know this stuff. There's all eight of them for you. Uh, you need to know uh, your basic features of a civilization. There are eight uh, features of a civilization. So you need to write these down and you need to know these. Cities. Well, organized central government. Uh, cities, well organized central government, complex religious uh, systems like polytheistic, they believe the many gods. Um, even with the uh, monotheistic, you know, think about going to church every Sunday, things like that. That's a complex religious institution. Division of labor. Job specialization, so we don't have everybody out farming and just hunting and gathering for themselves. You know, we actually have people who are scribes, artisans, things of that nature. So a division of labor, social hierarchy. Okay, however that is, uh, however that's divided up in each civilization. Um, representational art and monumental architecture. Think about this, guys. The Egyptians are known for what? What would their monumental architecture be? That's right, pyramids. What is ours? What is the U.S.'s monumental architecture? That's right, skyscrapers. Uh, pyramids have been around for over 5,000 years. If you leave a skyscraper alone for more than 100 years, it collapses. So anyway, um, so complex social institutions and, of course, writing. Some uh, temples there. and. Uh, the Maya. So we've already talked about the cultural diffusion stuff, but make sure you know city-states develop into empires. A city-state would include a city and its surrounding lands and villages. An empire is a group of cities, territories controlled by a ruler. There you go. We are complete.